Welcome back to my Billet Intake Manifold Build Series. I'm teaching you how to build an intake manifold like this from start to finish, from design all the way to machining. If you're new here, definitely stop this video, go back to the beginning of the series and start there. I don't want you to miss any of the information I'm sharing there. If you're not new here and you've been following along, let's get back into Fusion and get going. I have an absolute buttload of time into this project, so please support the channel, hit that subscribe button. Good morning, guys. Uh, I wanted to apologize for having so much time between videos here. I got a bit behind with the holidays. I had to get a bunch of stuff done here around the house. Got that big slash pile burned back there. And then I got our Audi Q7 TDI. I got that deleted and tuned. Had to do that on the ground, which is not fun at 47. Full exhaust job. Did that on the floor right here. And then uh, I got this cylinder fixed here in this lift. The cylinder on this post here was leaking, so I got that fixed as well. Uh, if that Porsche hadn't have been sitting on there and the lift working, that would have made my life a lot easier on the Q7. But let's get back into these videos and get some of your guys' questions answered here right off the bat. Somebody asked why I'm using so many fillets instead of chamfers, claiming that chamfers were easier to model and easier to machine. And in some instances, that's true. But for me, on the parts that we've covered so far, a lot of the places I use fillets are necessary because a lot of those surfaces will be machined using a ball nose end mill because there's not gonna be direct access to that part at like a 90 degree angle. So the fillets are necessary to be able to drive a ball mill along those surfaces at different angles and still being able to maintain the geometry. Now I am using chamfers in some places, but I typically choose not to model them. I just leave square edges and then I'll just chamfer them in the cam side, which we'll get into when we get there. So there are places where I'm using chamfers on the parts that we've covered so far. I just haven't modeled them. The other reason I'm using fillets on some parts of this manifold is just a preference thing. I like the way they look. Also, if you were to end up anodizing something like this on the sharp corners of chamfers, there's a high likelihood of chipping that anodizing. That's less likely if you use fillets. Now, these parts aren't getting anodized by me, but the end customer might custom anodize some of these for his customers. Speaking of the end customer, these manifolds are being built for Gersey Bear Performance. He does a bunch of awesome stuff for the J32 engines, supercharger kits, things like that for the Acura TSX. So if you have any interest in that, go check him out at Gersey Bear on Instagram. Another question I got was whether or not I was using accessibility analysis. What that is, is basically Fusion has some functions in it where you can see if you can get a tool into a place that you're not sure if you can reach or not. Now I have been using that on the cam side when I'm setting up positional angles and stuff for the fourth axis. But to be honest, I wasn't even aware that it was available in the design side. And now that I know that, I'm gonna have to try it out. So long story short, I don't know Fusion that well yet and I didn't know it was there. It is there in the design side under inspect accessibility analysis. So try it out. The other question I got was, will I work with you on your project? Of course I will. Whether that be something like this or a really simple little small part like a bracket or something. The caveat to that is all of this design time, programming time and machine time doesn't lend well to one-off parts. It gets very expensive very quickly. So if you are interested in working with me, I typically warn away from doing one-offs and usually try to only do production work. So if you want several of something, that'll make a lot more sense in this type of workflow. Now we can do, still do prototyping during that process. If you're unsure about the design, we can do things like design it, then 3D print it like I did with this manifold. I can send it to you, test fitment, things like that before we ever cut metal. But if we're gonna do that, we need to have an understanding that there's gonna be a production run of those parts after that. Otherwise, I can't make money. And if I can't make money, I can't stay in business. Running a shop like this is very expensive. And I will never, and if you are running a business, I advise you to never apologize for what your time's worth and what it takes to keep your doors open. So that being said, if you have a production run or a part idea that you need to bring to a reality, I'd love to work with you. That's about it for the questions. So in this episode, we're getting into the design of the plenum, which is the last piece of the puzzle on these intake manifolds before we get into the cam side of things. So let's go. All right, guys, let's get back into fusion here. And today we're looking at the design of these plenums here. So these are symmetrical. So I only had to design one and then I just copied it and rejointed it over on the other side. So this is only a single part, just two instances of it. So. Let me turn off all this other stuff. And this is what we're looking at. This is the plenum in its finished form. Pretty simple part. Did take a little bit of effort to get the shape I wanted. I'll activate that and we will pull this timeline back. 
I started this part based off of the plenum base that I already had, and I began a sketch on the surface of that plenum base and projected that outside curve to start my geometry here on the plenum. I also drew the throttle body location and bolt pattern, and that was relative to the manifold that was already there. I had a solid measurement between those, and I had the throttle bodies to blueprint, so I blueprinted the throttle bodies uh, using hand measurements, calipers, and pins and things. So I know that that bolt pattern is accurate, and the location is relative to the bolted up location on the scanned manifold that the customer had already sent me. Those are the two sketches I started with. I created this first extrude feature based off of that profile of the plenum base and all of these were done with making new planes that were relative to those sketches i was learning as i was going along here and i i found that having the plane within the timeline of the actual component seemed to help with going back to previous components and modifying and things like that so that's kind of been my workflow going forward is to make sure i create a plane instead of just drawing on the surface of another part so i made this plane and then created that sketch for that first extrude feature on that plane uh, with a projected curve from the previous part so it's no longer reliant on the surface of this part being where it is to create this new geometry. So then I created a plane that was out here in space, a distance offset from that original plane to try to get the height of the plenums that I wanted. And I created a secondary sketch there that was kind of the starting shape of the plenum I wanted. And then I created this loft feature. So this loft has a decent shape to it. It's not, it's not quite what I wanted for a finished shape, but it was a start. So then I created this profile here to cut away from this part. So again, just trying to get closer and closer to the shape I wanted, and then I extrude cut that. So this gave me the basic shape I wanted where the, the plenums would be tapering towards the rear runner, basically tapering both directions so volume is decreasing as it gets towards the back side of the plenum here. That way it would hopefully help equalize airflow across the three ports that, that the air is entering into, into the, uh, the runners of the intake manifold. And I just put a big fillet on that, pretty simple. So, so far, pretty simple geometry to make. So here's the shape we have so far. And then I just created a boss here that was the wall thickness that I wanted so the outside diameter of what I wanted around the inside of that throttle body. This construction line here, this arc is the inside diameter of the throttle body. So I wanted to make sure this outside boss was just the right amount of wall thickness that I desired for this whole plenum to be. And then I used a shell feature. So all I did was uh, select the two surfaces I wanted to get rid of, which was the face of this throttle body and the bottom of this plenum, and I gave it a wall thickness. So you can see here my wall thickness is 150 thou. And these two selected faces were the face of this throttle body and the face of this base flange here. And what that shell feature does is it just tries to give you a uniform wall thickness cutout of the inside of an entire part. But where shell struggles is with complex geometry. If you have a, like a small radius on the outside of this part and you try to shell that, it's gonna try to reverse the geometry on the inside, especially on these complex curves here. And typically that shell feature will fail. So you have to make sure that you're leaving a large enough radius on the outside of the part to where the with the wall thickness of the shell feature, you still will have a uniform radius on the inside of the part or else the shell function will definitely fail. So that's the plenum shelled out. And then I drew a sketch here and created the outside dimensions of the throttle body flange. And then I extruded that. Now this is where things get a little complicated when you're using shell, because had I done this beforehand, I would have been able to just extrude this all the way into the body of the part as far as I wanted to, without worrying about it protruding to the inside. But the shell feature would have screwed that up because it would have tried to shell out the inside of this flange as well. So it wouldn't have really worked. So on this feature here, I had to do kind of a little bit of a cumbersome thing where I basically basically would draw, so I used this uh, back side of this flange here and projected all the curves around that flange in a sketch. And then I extruded that out just a small distance so that it wouldn't protrude to the inside of this part. And I had to do that several times while drawing different sketch geometry here to try to get the, the finished shape that I wanted that would be machinable and easily filleted. If we just kind of go through what I did here, another small extrusion there, another sketch up here and then another small extrusion there. So on, the, on this extrusion here, all I did was select this face and then hit E for extrude and you can extrude that surface out without having to make a sketch. So that's all I did there. So another slight extrusion, no protrusion to the inside of the part. And again, 
and again. So creating this backside feature here actually took all of these different extrusions and a few sketches to actually achieve that. So sometimes things can get a little bit cumbersome like that when you're trying to not screw up geometry that you already have, but it is doable if you have some patience. So then I began adding some fillets here. So this fillet is on these corners here to round those off, rounded the back side of this flange here, and then I created a fillet around this top side and around the bottom side so that everything was nicely machinable with a ball nose end mill. So now we have basically the whole outside of the plenum is more or less complete. And then I started to create the features I needed on the inside of the plenum so that I could have the bolt pattern that would bolt up to the plenum base. So again, these features get a little bit cumbersome just due to the shape of the part and needing to extrude geometry without it protruding to the outside of the part now. And, and sometimes you can use like the extrude to surface commands and things like that. But unless you have like a single surface or you're not already attached to a body, those features don't really work that well. So sometimes you have to just kind of do this where you just kind of fumble your way through it slowly, one little section at a time. So I'm creating boss extrusions here without protruding to the outside of the part. And that way I'll have material here that I can use to have threaded holes in and, and have a ceiling surface for the O-rings and things like that. So I just continue to do this with each one of these features here. Some of them I was able to do more than one at a time, like these ones, because they were all relatively the same shape. Extended them a bit a bit further. So my goal was to have nice clean geometry where I can put radiuses around these parts so that it's all easily machined. You can drive the tools around it accurately to maintain the geometry that you're looking for and, and not have any spots where tools gouge into the part or anything like that. And then I added a fillet feature here to all of those bosses that I had created so far. So now we have those nice internal bosses there. And then I created these ones so these were able to go all the way to that surface without a problem in a single extrusion, but they're covering my throttle body hole. So I had to go in and do a cut feature here using this geometry, and then I just extrude cut it through there. So now I have all of those features cut in the way I want it. And the reason I have to go all the way to that floor is because I'm gonna be machining these from this side, and a straight tool has to be able to get in there and machine all of this accurately. So if I left like this portion here out or something, the end mill would not be able to drive around it. It would just leave an, basically an unmachined surface there. And then I filleted all those, this fillet here. So that's basically the whole inside of that part finished. Pretty straightforward so far. And then I created my tapped hole features here. So I've got my throttle body holes, which are an M8125 thread. I've got my plenum base holes, which are an M6 by one thread. And the reason you're seeing this ghosting over here on, on here is because I've already copied this part over. You're seeing that feature copied onto that secondary part that I have hidden currently, but it just still shows it to you for whatever reason. So that's more or less done, except I need to add some vacuum fittings here. So I created this plane here, which was slightly up off the part, parallel to the base of the part, since I would be doing these off of a flat fixture. So again, thinking forward to how I was going to machine these. And then I created this sketch here to make a boss for my vacuum fittings. Created that boss there. So I extruded it to that surface and then filleted that. So outside and inside fillets to make it nice and easy to machine around. Then I created a sketch on, on the surface of it here uh, where I wanted to put the threaded holes for the fittings. And then I created those hole features. Both of these smaller ones are a eighth inch NPT. This big one on the end is a quarter inch NPT, which can be used for like a brake booster. And then this one is an M12 that's used for the factory intake air temperature sensor. Uh, but I had to create a pretty large chamfer for the O-ring for that to seed on. But that's about it. So some of this surface patch and things like this are uh, something I put in here later when I was doing the machining side of things uh, to patch holes and things like that. I could probably unhide those bodies. So there's my surface patch on the inside. So I basically created geometry there to cover those holes when I was doing the machining side to drive a tool smoothly around all these profiles without having them dive into holes. That's about it, that's the plenums. And then I just copied this one over to the other side. So then I had my two plenums there. This one being just a copy of the first one. So that's it guys, that is this entire intake manifold done. Uh, these injectors I just pulled in from, uh, I had them previously that I had pulled in off of uh, GrabCAD or something like that. I don't remember where I got them, but you can find things like that if you need them or hardware. Uh, hardware you can actually download straight from McMaster Car. 
They have solid model files for all the hardware, which I haven't put in this file. I find it kind of redundant and silly, but if you wanted to do that, you can. And then everything else is by design here. So that's the intake manifold completely done as far as design. I hope you guys are able to follow along with all this and you're getting some value from it. If that's the case, please help support the channel. Like, subscribe, comment. Comment with your questions again. I will be answering those. And in the next video, we're gonna be getting into the cam side of things. So starting to program in Fusion to actually machine these parts. I know that's what a lot of you guys are waiting for. So we'll be getting into that next. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.